There is reasons why people are sick in body. It's not just random that people get sick. It's not just random that disease happens. Now, there are random mutations, and it's possible that it can be random, but more times than not, it's not by random act that you just get sin. So let's talk about some possible open doors. Now, if you're sick in body right now, I'm not saying that this is why you're sick, that these are the reasons. And I'm giving you only probably four or five. There's many other reasons. So don't think, oh, I must be on this list because I'm sick in body. No, you might be sick in body because of another reason, but these are some possible reasons. Number one is personal sin. Now, I know a lot of pastors are not going to preach this, not going to share this, but according to Jesus, it's possible for personal sin to cause physical affliction. Now, I want you to know it's not Jesus giving you the sickness. If you have personal sin and you get sick because of it, it's not God putting sickness on you. Sickness is a result, I hope you know, of sin. Sin is the root, sickness is the fruit. So we know that when sin came, right, sickness also came. So personal sin in our lives can be an open door for sickness as well as become because sin is the root of sickness and as well as take it could take root in our life because of personal sin. Because remember, sickness is built on the foundation of sin. Now, let me show you this in scripture because some of you are like, there's no way. Let me show you this in scripture. John chapter five, the story of the man at the pool of Beth Bethesda. We watched this on The Chosen last week. Jesus is ministering to an individual that's been sick for 38 years. He's been suffering. He's lame. He cannot walk for 38 years. He's been suffering with this illness. Now, after being healed, Jesus is going to show us how personal sin is connected to sickness. Because if I didn't have a verse, I wouldn't be able to say this. John 5, 14, watch what happens. Now, later on, he gets healed and Jesus and him meet again. Now, Jesus said to him, and they meet in the temple. Jesus said to him, see, you have been made well. This is what Jesus says. Sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon you. Some translators say, lest a worse sickness comes upon you. Now, what was the thing that was upon him? Ding, 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 type in the chat, sickness. For 38 years, sickness was upon him. Jesus came, healed him, took the sickness off of him, and then Jesus sees him later in John 5, 14, and says, don't sin anymore. Don't keep sinning, because something worse could come on you. A worse sickness could come on you. So Jesus was attaching. Now, Jesus didn't say, oh, you don't worry about it. You're covered. And, you know, sickness and sin have nothing in common. And you don't have to worry if you sin. No, Jesus said, if you keep sinning, if you go on doing that, something worse, a worse sickness can come. Now, is it possible? Now, the fact that Jesus said sin no more implies that it was the man's sin that was the problem in the first place. So sin didn't stop the healing, but it was the cause of sickness. Is it possible? Listen to me closely that friends and family, personal, uh, pers our personal lives, that we are sick in our bodies because we're involved in pornography, we're involved in adultery, we're involved in lust, we're involved in uh, lying, we're involved in cheating, we're involved in scamming people, we're involved in blasphemy, we're involved in idolatry. Think about this. We randomly get sick, right? Someone goes off and commits adultery. And then like a year later, they're sick in their body and they end up super, super sick. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Does anybody ever stop and say, wait a minute. Do you think that that's possible that that guy went and committed adultery, went and got, you know, cheated on his wife and whatever, and that that cancer or diabetes or, uh, or you know, high blood pressure or heart disease or liver failure, is it even possible that his sin caused him to be sick? Well, according to this, it is possible. So you have to realize that there are consequences of sin. Are you covered by the blood? Yes. But Jesus didn't say, oh, you're covered by the blood, brother, don't worry. And I'm going to show you in the New Testament later that actually Paul addresses a church where because of their sin, they were sick and dying. Paul actually says you're sick and dying because of the sin in your life. So I want you to get the fear of God in you. I want you to stop thinking that everything's random. People die, you know, get cancer, get this because no big deal. They get the flu or they just die and they get uh, high blood pressure, diabetes. But you have to realize it could be sin in our lives that actually causes sickness. Now, I already told you not every sickness will be because of these reasons, but these are some reasons to start thinking about. To be a spiritual Christian, read your Bible and say, wait a minute. Sickness is connected to personal choices. Now, let me make this argument stronger. You can't get lung cancer from smoking if you've never smoked. Now, how many know if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, it looks like you have lung cancer from smoking. Your lungs have smoke all in them. It's damaged. Your lung tissue is black. And you say, doctor, I've never smoked before. No one in history 
has gotten lung cancer from smoking that hasn't smoked. So is it safe to say the action or act of smoking is connected to that cancer? Absolutely. It's like saying I got liver failure from drinking, but I never drank before. Or I have heart problems for being overweight. Imagine me coming to you guys and saying, hey guys, I went to the hospital and I have heart problems. The doctor says it's because from being overweight. And every one of you say, Isaiah, you are 130 pounds. You're not overweight. Exactly. So you have to realize actions are tied into sicknesses. If I'm overweight from eating and eating and eating, it's, I'm prone to heart problems. If I'm drinking every day, I'm prone to liver problems. If I'm smoking every day, I'm prone to lung cancer. So here we see sins, which if you didn't know, smoking, drinking, and overeating are all sins. If you didn't know, it's called gluttony. All three of those are attached to a sickness, and that's not even a Christian that would believe that. That's the world that teaches that. Yet why is it we don't believe that sickness is attached to actions. It is, it is. Personal sin can be an open door to sickness in our life. These are actual choices and actions that are connected to sickness. It's not always random. Some sickness, some, is connected to personal choices. Now, let me make it clear. Not all sickness is connected or can be pointed to a personal sin, but there are some that are pointed to personal sins according to what Jesus told the man at the pool of Bethesda. Personal sin can be the source of the problem. So many people, listen to me right now, in the in cults or that dabble in the occult, they get sick in their body. I deal with many people all the time that are coming out of the occult or they're coming out of witchcraft or they're coming out of divination, tarot card reading, crystal balls, whatever it is, and they're sick in body. They get sick in body and they're like, I started getting sick when this happened, right? Right when I started dabbling in witchcraft, I got sick. So that action is connected to that sickness. Celebrities that say I sold my soul to Satan, which by the way, um, Satan can't buy your soul because you don't own your soul, God does. But they say I sold my soul, I made a contract. It's possible, I made a contract with the devil. And then they got sick in their body after. I had one celebrity I listened to an interview on, said they got fibromyalgia, right? When they made that deal with Satan, they got fibromyalgia and they have pain all over the body, unexplainable, okay? Or people that have incredibly perverse lifestyles, they get sick in their body and they die of sickness. And people don't realize it was the perversion, the iniquity and the sin that caused them to get sick because sickness is demonic. So you're telling me these choices and sin is not all connected to sickness? It's absolutely connected. Okay, number two way that you could be open the door to sickness is strife and bitterness. One thing I've seen over and over and over, guys, in praying for the sick and people that are sick in body is people who are bitter get sick. Write that down. People who are bitter get sick. I can't count how many times I've seen a bitter person get sick or someone who's always in strife or at odds with people get sick. People that hold unforgiveness, people that hold resentment, they end up sick in the hospital and they end up being bitter and angry at people and at God for whatever reason, strife and bitterness opens the door. James chapter three, verses 14 through 16, it says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. And listen to what James says. This is Jesus' half brother. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So James is telling us if there's self-seeking, if there's bitterness, if there's envy, if there's strife, contention, every evil thing is there. So you have to realize bitter envy, self-seeking, these are all open doors for sickness. Now is sickness evil? Yes. So if he says, all every evil thing is there is sickness attached to the every evil thing absolutely where these things are according to james sickness dwells so it's safe to say we're strife we're envy we're bitterness we're self-seeking these are all things where an open door comes where sickness is able to come and take root sickness is able to come and produce fruit that sin grows in our life sin gives birth to death the bible says okay james is going to go on in chapter 5 verse 16 to say confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, I never saw this until I was preparing. James connects confessing your trespasses, which is your sins. He says, confess them to each other and pray and you're gonna be healed. I never saw this before. James actually ties in confessing sin to being healed in your physical body. Again, where I'm making my point stronger 
that all of these sickness and issues are a result of having sin or trespasses or, or strife or envy with each other. And James is making his point stronger two chapters later, saying you have to realize this is why you guys are sick. Now, 1 Corinthians eleven eighteen, 18, the strongest point I can make here. Paul addresses the church of Corinth about the same issues. So he says this, first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And then he says, there's bickering and fighting and bitterness and strife. And now Paul says in chapter 11, verse 29, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself. Now discerning, the, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many of you are weak and sick and are asleep. Now, when he says in our sleep, that means you're dead. So he says, because you're not eating the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner, you're actually getting physical sickness. And many of you are dying of physical sickness because the sin in your life. Now, eating and drinking in an unworthy manner, you say, Isaiah, what is that? It's a direct reference to gluttony, drunkenness, and shaming those that had nothing. Not only were they overeating at the Lord's table, listen to me, guys, come on, stay with me. They were getting drunk at the Lord's table. They were getting drunk. And we're finding all this in 1 Corinthians 11, 21. They were getting drunk and they were shaming the poor people. They were like, you guys are poor. You have nothing. Look what we have. So he says, because of your drunkenness, because of your overeating, and because you're shaming the poor, Paul says, you're getting sick in your body, your physical body, and you're dying because of your actions. So again, Paul is going to correlate sickness with sin okay this is all in your bible don't say i'm making this up that's not possible i'm giving you scripture jesus and i'm giving you paul okay number three now this is where you guys are going to stop liking me here number three open door for sickness is a poor diet yes there's a poor diet this is in scripture and this is very important to note not all sickness comes from personal sin bitterness or a demonic spirit but also sickness can come from a poor diet in 1 Timothy 5.23, Paul addresses Timothy. Now, Timothy had frequent infirmities, Paul said, and he says, you need to drink a little bit of wine because you're only drinking water. And back then there was bacteria. Scholars say there was parasites and germs in the water. And the little bit of wine would be a natural remedy to kill the bacteria that, um, that Timothy had in his stomach. So Paul writes Timothy and says, Timothy, don't drink only water, drink a little bit of wine. Now he didn't say get drunk. He didn't say drink. This was not pleasure drinking. This was not one beer at the house. Listen to what he was happening. He was getting sick from the drinking water. And Paul said, drink a little bit of wine, a sip of wine, so that it would kill the bacteria in your stomach. Now here's what I want you to notice. For all of you that are super spiritual like me, I'm very spiritual. Listen to what he didn't say. Paul didn't say, I'm going to pray for you to be healed. Now, Paul is praying for the sick. Acts 19, Paul, you're laying hands and power is going forth and miracles are going forth. And your boy, Timothy's sick in his body. He's having nonstop infirmities. He's having stomach aches all the time. And Paul's like, oh, Timothy, just drink a little bit of wine. Drink a sip of wine to kill the bacteria. And Timothy's like, why don't you pray for me? Because notice what happens here. Paul is addressing that personal diet matters. It matters what you're eating, what you're drinking. This would be a remedy. So he didn't say, um, you know, I'm gonna come cast a demon of infirmity out of you. Or he didn't say, Timothy, I'm gonna come lay hands on you when I get over there. He said, no, Timothy, you need to change your diet because the sickness is attached to the poor diet. So stop blaming the devil for having a poor diet. If you're getting sick all the time because of a poor diet or a weak immune system, it's not the devil, it's McDonald's. Come on, somebody help me preach. It's not the devil, it's your poor choices. And I think the devil gets way too much credit for our poor choices. Like, cast this demon out of me. I cannot cast a bad diet out of you. I'm sorry, I can't. There's no demon of a bad diet. Now, is there a spirit of gluttony? Yes. Is there a demon of anorexia? Yes, but there's not a demon of poor diet. So you need to make diet choices. Now, this is not a diet live stream. I am the last guy that you ever want to get diet advice from, okay? Because I eat once a day, if that, and my diet's terrible. But I'm letting you know that if you're sick in body, it could also be a diet. Healing and deliverance is not a quick way out of poor choices. Don't blame Satan, blame McDonald's, okay? That's what's causing you to be sick. If you're out at the drive-thru every day, if you got Starbucks every day eating a, you know, Frappuccino that has like 1,400 calories, all sugar, rotting your teeth, and you're like, the devil's giving me cavities, and I'm at the dentist. No, it's the caramel Frappuccino, extra caramel, extra whip, and, and caramel in the cup, and, and twice a day, that's what's giving you cavities. The devil's not giving you cavities. Do not come to me asking me, oh, Isaiah, will you just come pray because, you know, I have all these cavities in my mouth. I'm having sores and pain. 
then maybe you should stop drinking two Frappuccinos every day and going to McDonald's and getting a sweet tea. So I want you to realize, I don't want to shame. I'm not shaming anybody, but I want you to recognize, guys, that we make poor choices and we blame the devil. Healing and deliverance is not a quick way out. So don't blame Satan for all these things. Now, I eat once a day usually. I have a poor diet. I'm being honest with you. I have a poor diet. I usually eat little, and when I do, it's not super good. I do once in a while to make myself feel better. I'll drink like those uh, health shakes, the naked shakes that have all the fruit and stuff. And they're not even really probably good for you, but I'm like, oh, it has 40 blueberries and two pineapples, and I haven't eaten fruit since like 1998. I mean, literally, like I haven't had any fruit since 1998. I'm gonna drink one of these, and it's like eating four oranges. Now, it's not as good for you if you juice it than eating it naturally, but I have a poor diet. And often days when I'm going to stream, I have headaches and I'm nauseous oftentimes. And then I'm like, I don't buy demons. It's not spiritual warfare. It's my body starving for calories. That's what it is. So I don't need to buy demons. I need to go eat something. And guys, I lost my appetite when I got saved. I've never gotten it back. I don't know. It's the thorn in my flesh, okay? But I just never have an appetite. But I want you to recognize, someone said that's so much sugar in there. I want you to recognize that these are diet choices that can cause sickness. Okay, the last one I wanna talk about that can cause sickness is the spirit of infirmity. Okay, so we talked about uh, personal sin. We talked about bitterness, envy, and strife. We talked about diet. Come on, help me. And then spirit of infirmity is another thing. We need to do another teaching on this because I'm barely scratching the surface here and we're an hour and 15 minutes in and I still want to pray for the sick. The spirit of infirmity is our fourth open door and things, the reason why you could be sick. Luke 13, 11 says, and behold, there was a woman who had, listen to what it says, who had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years and was bent over and can no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw, saw her, he called her to him and said to her, women, you are loosed. He didn't say healed. He said, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and she glorified God. So this woman was demonized for 18 years by a spirit. The spirit was actually causing her sickness. She did not need healing prayer. She needed deliverance. She actually needed to be loosed from a demonic spirit because it was the demonic spirit that was causing her to be sick in her body. And Jesus loosed her from the power of the demonic spirit. In Matthew 8, 16, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demonized and he cast out spirits with his word and he healed all who were sick. So here we see deliverance connected here to sickness. Now in these situations, doctors usually will not be able to provide a remedy. They're not gonna have a solution to the problem. They're often gonna say, we don't know the cause. We know you're sick. We believe you're sick, but we don't know why. That's usually a telltale sign that there's a spirit of infirmity or a demon at work making you sick. Remember, a doctor will not be able to find a demon. So if you keep going to the doctor over and over, trying to get the demon figured out, you're not gonna get freedom. You need to go get deliverance, not a doctor, because the demon is causing the sickness and the doctor cannot give you an x-ray machine to tell if there's a demon there. Now there's 100% a place for doctors, there's a place for medicine, but there's also 100% a place for deliverance. So it's not doctor or deliverance, it's this and that, it's both, okay? It's not one or the other. I have lots of family in medical, I believe in medical, I take my kids to the doctor, I go get checked up, I'm not one of those guys that's like, I'll just pray and let my kid die because if God doesn't heal him, it's not as well. No, I'll, I'll pray first, Pray first, that's what I always do. And then if the prayer doesn't, God doesn't do it right away, let's take him to the doctor and see what's going on. But just know that there is absolutely a place for medicine and doctors and physicians in scripture. Luke was a doctor, y'all. I don't know if you know this, the person who wrote the book of Acts was a medical doctor. So there is a place for medical in scripture, but you have to realize if it is a demon, a doctor's not gonna be able to help you and usually pills are not gonna be able to help you if it is a demon. So medicine and surgery cannot break the spirit of infirmity off of someone. Only someone who walks in the power of God can. So this was a spiritual condition causing physical issues. Now I've dealt with various demons that cause sickness. Now I wanna say this, it's not only the spirit of infirmity that can cause sickness because I've met other demons that cause sickness. And I don't know if it's any demon I don't know if it's like a certain rank of demon or a certain level of demon, but other demons can cause sickness, not just the spirit of infirmity, but usually the spirit of infirmity is the main culprit for sickness when it comes to the demonic. Demons also hide in body parts and they wreak havoc in that body part. I don't know how this works. Again, we see in part, we prophesy in part, we look through a lens darkly, but demons do hide in body parts. I've had demons say I'm hiding in their throat, I'm hiding in their arm, I'm hiding in their foot, I'm hiding in their back. And then the person will say, I've had 
pain in my shoulder. I've had pain in my hip for years and years. And the demon will actually live in that body part. Again, it's spiritual. I don't understand it. I can't give you a verse or a logical explanation. I just know that demons can hide in body parts. I know religious people are going to squirm here and go, oh, where's that in the Bible? And my answer is, it's not in the Bible. I don't know where demons can hide in body parts, but I know that demons live inside of us. So if a demon can live inside of me and my body parts are part of me, then it's very safe to say demons can live inside of body parts. So if I'm doing deliverance, sometimes you'll hear me say, I command you to come out of that body part. I command you to come out of their throat. I command you to come out of their arm. If you've ever been delivered, you know that you felt demons moving around. How did you feel them moving around? They were moving around your body parts. If you felt a demon in your stomach, then you felt it in your throat. And then you said, I felt a demon right here in my throat. The demons in your throat, okay? We cast it out. And then you feel it coming out through your mouth or you feel it crawling down your arm. Demons can get in body parts. So just know that religious people are going to say it's fake. It's okay. We think they're fake as well. So you have to realize various demons, I'd have thrown it in there just for fun, but various demons can cause sicknesses. And tonight we're not just going to pray for healing. We're also going to pray for deliverance. So when I pray for the sick, I don't ever just pray for the sick. I also come against the demonic spirits that might be causing the sickness because when you're praying for the sick and healing the sick and in another video, um, because I don't have time to do it tonight, I'll go into all the ways that the sick could be healed. There's many other ways that the sick could be healed, but you need to understand that oftentimes the spirit of infirmity wreaks havoc in your body and it won't let up until you get deliverance. So you guys got to realize we need to know what we're dealing with. A demon of, demon of infirmity can be cast out but an unhealthy lifestyle cannot be cast out. So if you're living unhealthy, I can't cast it out of you. And if there's a demon, I'm telling you right now, if there's a demon, I could cast it out. So your doctor can't do anything. Now, if it's not a demon, if God doesn't heal you, I'm not a medical doctor. So you need to go see your doctor or your physician. Do not go cold turkey on your medicine tonight saying, I'm just going to believe God and then end up dying. Do we believe God can heal you? Yes. Do we believe it's God's will to heal you tonight? Yes. Do we believe God wants to restore every person? Absolutely. But understand his ways are not our ways. Our job is to partner with God. Our job is to believe. If it's a personal sin in our life going, causing the, the sin, then Lord, forgive me my sin. Forgive me tonight, Lord. Heal me tonight, God, I repent. If it's a demon, then tonight, Lord, deliver me. If it's a diet change I need, then Lord, help me to change my diet. I need to change it. If it's bitterness and strife, forgive me, Lord. I release this unforgiveness. Who am I, I have unforgiveness towards? I need to get rid of it. I need to break it. I need to stop bickering and fighting. Whatever the cause is, God wants to heal you and restore you tonight. God wants to renew you. Now, again, uh, natural medicine and do whatever the doctors give you and their doctors help you, all this stuff God can use. God can use all of this. Again, Luke was a physician, a doctor. God can use this to bring healing and restoration, but we always believe for God's divine healing. This is God's order. This is God's way. And this is why he took on the stripes.